Yes, we're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa this morning. Uh, Kofi is right here with us. Uh, he joins us. And also we have Opuna Bonkataria who will be joining us to make sense of some of the headlines this morning. Uh, Opuna Bonkataria, it's good to have you join us. Uh, it feels like saying Happy New Year to you once again. Good morning, Matthew. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Kofi. Good morning, Gopada Um we, we thank God, you know, listening to Mercy talk about the cash swap, which we'll look at uh, later on today. Uh, we thank God that we uh, live for 10 more days, you know, of grace. I think we, we need to thank him, <laughs> you know. Good. Anyway, you're welcome. Good. 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 No, but well, we definitely. I'm sure we will definitely get to that point. The headlines. I have stepped behind. I have stepped behind the camera. I have said all I needed to say. Okay. All right. Let's run through the punch this morning. Anger spreads over okay. scarcity as reps oppose CBN extension. That's the new Naira note. Uh, that's on the punch. Anger spreads over scarcity. Reps oppose CBN extension. Customers stranded, ATMs empty as worshippers dump old notes in churches. <laughs> I mean, I, I really want to know how. Was it? I, was it <laughs> did I, you did you work in the, you know, in, in the church you have different units. And those who work with the accounting unit in church, that's also uh, this person you need to speak I, with. To I, I, I listened to a pastor telling his members yesterday, my pastor anyway, <laughs> you know, telling telling the members, you know, don't bring old Naira old to church. Don't bring old Naira. You know, which is true, and some people think it's strange for a pastor to tell the members not to bring the old Naira, but I mean, it's just the truth. No, but but I, so my question is, as much as that's true, is it okay for us to say we don't want the old, we reject the old Naira when the new Naira is not available? I, what exactly is the provision? Uh, but I know that Okuna Boy is waiting. Let's just run through this entirely. We're so sorry. Uh, we'll get your thoughts in no time. CBN deploys thirty thousand super agents nationwide to boost cash swap program. And that's for, you know, those who have been left out, almost the unbanked. We talked about that, you know, last week. And Mephili says 1.9 trillion old notes deposited, projected 900 billion naira before deadline. Uh, how can people be keeping all of this? Government appoints appointment, loop sided, lacks merit. Uh, former President Olusha Gunobasanjo is quoted to say, court delivers judgment seeking 2023 polls cancellation. And Ekwere Madu in court Tuesday after 223-day detention. My support was for Vice President Osibajo. Uh, you know, the spokeswoman, not Tunubu, I mean, the spokeswoman of the APC who left. <laughs> you know, we've been talking about that. Uh, you also have 11 killed in Ondo crash, Lagos container crash, nine. So you also have a picture there's also a reflection of all of that picture to all of the sad incident that happened in Ondo State and in Lagos State yesterday. United Nations projects 3% growth for Nigeria and two Nigerians arrested for 500,000 fraud in Canada. $500,000, I beg your pardon, in Canada. 22,000 doctors dump Nigeria, 2022 says NARD. Uh, that's the NAD quoted to say. Well, that's the much we can take this morning on the punch. All right. We'll have, we'll have to run through them quickly um, so we can take up another thoughts. And the Nation newspaper this morning, uh, big one there, Naira Swap Row Deepens. Naira Swap Row uh, Deepens. Um, reps reject 10-day deadline extension. CBN to mop up 900 billion Naira more from circulation. Uh, took hits amongst nine killers. Container falls on commercial bus in Lagos. Sad, 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 sad. Ajero set to replace Uwaba as NLC president. Pension funds rise to 15 trillion naira. 11 burnt to death in Ondo road accident. That's somewhere near Ore. And uh, three policemen killed at checkpoint. Uh, Buhari unmoved by PDP's abusers, says Tinubu. Petrol now 550 naira in cities. I don't know if... Uh, Tim Booth still thinks this is uh, uh, to... About him. Uh, yeah, about him. But that's a good way to put it. Let's move to the next one. Well, uh, the Daily Trust says, federal government under pressure to probe headers killings in Nasarawa. And this is very different from, you know, all of the headlines. I think they decided to do something different. Mixed reaction as CBN extends Naira deadline to February 17. Uh, that's what you find. 1.9 trillion Naira mopped up. Reps reject extension, vow to sign 
arrest warrant against Mephili, and they're hoping that that happens today. Uh, we'll just take one and then uh, we'll move on to the next. After a controversy visit to Kano to commission eight projects, uh, that's uh, the president being referred to in that one. We'll just move away. There are several interesting headlines this morning. All right, now let's bring in at this point to Burabo and Kotara for want of time. Upanabo, let's talk about this cash swap role, sir. Um, I think that's going to be of, of interest to you. Very quickly, your thoughts. I'm wondering why the reps are rejecting the 10 day deadline extension. I mean, they wanted an extension, and maybe even though they didn't get the, the June 31, it said June 31st. Um, this is this has to have a bread is better than a kakara. What, what are your thoughts on this, sir? It is quite interesting, uh, Kofi. Interesting because we have other burning issues such as um, the killings, uh, violence in the country, and so on. And I've never seen this kind of dexterity on the side of, on the part of uh, the representatives to address these issues. Now they talk of the Naira swap because, uh, let me say, 90% of them are involved. They will, they will be affected. Now the rest or the National Assembly is dominated by the APC. And uh, I have a conviction that a lot of them have tax cash uh, in their houses and for the purpose of the election, the four commissioner elections. And so what they want is to extend it beyond the extended time, maybe July or thereabouts, so that they can extend this cash that they've already started their votes in their houses for the purpose of this election. Now, even if you say uh, February 10th or thereabouts, I think it's February 10th, if I'm right. If you say February 10th, it is before the elections. So it really makes no sense. The poor probably would have achieved what they wanted to achieve because that would be before the elections. Otherwise, this shouldn't be a problem. Although, I am of the view that we should have adopted the British system where with the emergence of a new, of a new monarch, who is King Charles, uh, they've given about a year or two, the uh, currency having the head of the, his mother, is still legit legal and can still a legal tender and can, can still be used in Britain. It's over a period because, and I believe that is as a result of the cost implication. They've also considered that not all can really change their pounds uh, uh, as fast as we want uh, the Naira to be changed in Nigeria. But principally, the Nigerian issue has to do with the monies stashed in their various houses by politicians. Of course, the rep representatives are also politicians. And don't forget that there is this rumor that um, the presidential candidate of the APC has this pension, he has this knack for starting money in his house. I say rumor because I know that very true. Kofi and Messi will tell me these are allegations that <laughs> are yet to be proven. So I said rumor. Uh -huh. And also I, guess, I guess you're referring to the uh, the the, um, the bullion van incident. I think that has been taken care of. Yeah, yeah, uh, the bullion van incident, yes. and, and which which uh, the uh, Tinubu admitted. So, in fact, when that when we had that saga, Tinubu's response was that. What is wrong with Bulan Van? Is it that his money driving no, no, into his but, house? But, but only the, for somebody who said, the organizing sector. I said only for somebody who said, <laughs> I just said, I'm coming to that. I said only for <laughs> somebody who said to say that the Bulan Van driver missed his route. How ridiculous can that be? Missed his route, got to Timbu's house, drove into the compound, he still missed his route. I mean, it's not possible now. Well, well, well we, leave, we, we, we don't have evidence. I, I'm sure if we had a Dewa lady. The the, the, the you, secretary then here. Then you ask if you if you saw you've seen any cash of stock any bullion. stack of cash or a vault in Tinubu's house, you know. And you may also say that uh, Mr. Tinubu never no, explicitly Tinibu said that they came to convey so evacuate cash from his house. Extrapolate, wait now. You know we don't really have time. How you do this extrapolate? Tinubu said. There is nothing wrong with a bullion man bringing his own cash to his own house. That's what he said. No, no but, but he never he never said that they came to evacuate cash from his house or bring cash to his house. No, he said if the money is his own. So if he brings, if the bullion van brings his money to his house, that's what Tinibu himself said. All right. All right. The organizer in 2019, the organizer secretary is now saying, no, the, uh, the driver missed his food. It's rationally inexplicable. Why do you explain that? That that driver who missed his food, we are talking of how much? Drove the vehicle to Tinubu's house and has not been penalized for missing his route. 
What is something that happened to that money? I mean, I, I don't want to even go into that because there are certain things you don't even respond to because you give some credence to it. You don't even respond to that. The man just made a fool of himself, a misfit of his intelligence. For instance, you, you would have just kept quiet. You would have just kept quiet. Bulova will miss. Why did the Bulova miss his route to my house? <laughs> you know, you know what can tell. Why did he miss his route it, to it, it just happened this year, but we have to move on to our next. You are one. playing the devil's advocate. <laughs> I agree with you. No problem. <laughs> no problem. That's the devil's advocate. That's your job. I agree with you. Kofi? Now, so that's why the National Assembly is really worried. Because a lot of them, you know how embarrassing it will be for them to move their billions to, to, the, to the banks right now. Of course, it's going to, the sensation is going to create. I, li I and like it. They are trying to avoid because there are stacked money in their votes, in their houses. Because in politics, there is nothing like transfer. You only transfer what is legitimate. And you know that most of these political funds are slush funds. There's no question how you got the fund. There's even a law on how much you're supposed to spend. And the town on the road doesn't believe in transfer. This political town doesn't believe in transfer. Give me my cash. It's cash and carry. But if I hand back for ground, that's, that's, that's the system. And that is why they are distraught. That's why they are worried. Otherwise, you have other burning and death issues. Like I said, such as insecurity, such as the poor scarcity, and so on. I have not seen this kind of dexterity. I have not seen the National Assembly is not as interested in those issues as it is interested in, in, in this uh, um, uh, uh, money swap. So that is the whole truth about the issue of the tension and the uh, what, what how like the hype and all those things is because they have stacked money in their goals at home. Well, um, I, I know that this is still in court. I mean, there will be a judgment that will be delivered today uh, about the cancellation of the 2023 polls. But in, in your thoughts, let's just speak, you know, to the other parts of, you know, this kind of thought or a law or suit that's actually seeking this action and also seeking the sack of the president. What do you make of it? I mean, is it very natural in a democratic dispensation that an election should be cancelled? When the snow case elections of are, state of elections emergency. Should be canceled when you have a, elections should be cancelled when you have a first major. Can you hear me? Can you say that again? Elections should be cancelled when you have, oh my God, you see what we are talking about? <laughs> You're out of power, like, but just go ahead. No problem. Just go ahead. Yes, elections, should be, yes, elections should be cancelled when you have a first major. That's the only time you can cancel an election because uh, in that case, it is not it is beyond human control. And of course, there are also esti other estimating circumstances, like what happened in, in uh, 2015, during the Jonathan era, and so on. But you don't just get up in the morning to cancel an election. On what grounds? For now, there are no valid reasons, cogent reasons, for the elections to be cancelled. Even in 2015, when we had insecurity in the Northeast, the elections were postponed by just two weeks, after which credible elections were conducted in those areas. So on what premise are you going to now postpone or cancel this election? You see, this is what I refer to as quantiphobia. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. A lot of these politicians that believe that should the elections hold, they will not be favored. They might not win. Those in office like the APC believe that they may be voted out of power and so on. And that is why they call for the cancellation of this election. Or are you give me one valid reason? I mean, I question the reasonableness in the call for the cancellation. There is no reason. What will necessitate it? Nothing. For now, nothing. Like I said, the worst case scenario would have been the insecurity in the country. In the northeast, we had insecurity under Jonathan. And when it was extended by two weeks, the ABC cried foul, saying, oh, the, it was extended because they wanted to rig the election. That's why it was extended. They were perfecting means of rigging the election. So, when, <coughs> excuse me. So, on what grounds are you not going to postpone this election? On what grounds? The INEC has said it is ready, prepared for, to conduct the election, and is also assuring of a free, credible, and transparent election. So, what is the reason for canceling the election? Fear. 
Probably they've done their research and have come to realize that certain persons might not win in the forthcoming general election. And so the best thing is, let us cancel it. I tell you, after now, a lot of persons are going to stimulate crisis in a lot of places so that the elections will not hold. It's already taking place in the East. It's already taking place in the East. But my call on INEC is to ensure that it doesn't capitulate. And I also pray that the judiciary will not be a party to the progression of the uh, democratic system that will be able to sustain, or the civilian rule, let me say that way, that will be able to sustain since 1999. It should not be a party to it. Let the elections go ahead. And let's have a change of government. A lot of us are tired of this cataclysmic leadership we have in this country. I wish Buhari would even get up this point to say he has resigned. Because I have a conviction that a man like the Vice President, between now and May 29th, will hew us out of this mountain of despair that we found ourselves. I'm sorry, Upuna, so it, 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 it will be happening. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry to, to, to bust your bubble, but right it, it, it will be happening. It's my right for to call on Mr. President. It's in the constitutional right now. You can go to NASA. It's there in the constitutional right now. I did not say that. I said he resigned. That's what I said. It's my right. Yeah. I can say Mr. President resigned. But it's, it's uh, also it's also it's, his it's yeah, also yeah, his yeah, right yeah. to it's his right to say no, you know. Uh, as, as much as it's your right. I, not, I don't say it is my right, so yeah. I have to exercise my constitution to exercise my right to it. Let, let, right to let, let, let's move to the next you, one very quickly. You resign. You resign <laughs> from uh, Plus TV. It's my right to say so. It's also your right to say no. Then yeah. the manager has the final and, and, and I'm, uh -huh. I'm telling you, it won't be happening anytime soon. I'm just trying to save you the stress, no, it will not stress happen. Don't bother. It will or not false hope. It will not even happen. <laughs> it will not even happen. Don't bother. It will not even happen. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. But that um, is to tell you how bad the situation is. Yeah. Okay. Very quickly, please. The the the, the apex. Uh, this is on the front page of a leadership, and it's also captured in the Daily Trust as their lead story. Um, but the leadership says uh, the apex. Northern Social uh, Cultural Group, Arewa Consultative Forum, uh, is calling on the federal government to, to ask a matter of urgency, conduct an investigation surrounding the murder, that's the word they used, murder, of over 50 pastoralists, uh, we call them, you know, herdsmen here, uh, and butchers around Doma in Nasara State by purported drone strikes, some reports that said a helicopter strike on the 25th of uh, January 2023. Um, if you look at the front page of the uh, Daily Trust, it says FG under pressure to probe headless killings in Nasarawa. Uh, Makban, that's uh, uh, Mietela Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria, says it's war crime, blames or Tom. NBA, NHRC, see compensation for victims, families. My hands are clean, Benue State Governor and uh, ACF, NM NCM demand investigation. I think the Benue State Government or Governor uh, has to say that because of his. Uh, what he's been saying in the past, uh, quite heated ret rhetoric, uh, if, you, if you ask me. Your, your thoughts on this? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, it's okay for them to call, but it's a fleeting illusion. And even if the comments investigation is going to be endless or, at the end of the day, swept under the carpet, that is what will happen. The question you ask yourself, the first question you ask yourself is, how come they were able to use that drone successfully to wreak that havoc? What was the uh, uh, Airways authorities? What, 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 what were they doing? What was the Nigerian Air Force doing? What? These are the questions you ask. You see, you find out that uh, there is some high level of complicity. That is what is going on in this country. And so many military officers have come up to say yes, to agree with the fact that there is some high level of complicity. And that is why you find out that even the issue of kidnappings and abductions and so on, and the increase. Because even the military men are not happy, they are disgruntled. The, uh, the, the General uh, uh, Ratson Kuti made this known and was reduced, demoted from a Brigadier General to a Colonel and retired. So you cannot say, how ah, we sure. Ratson Kuti, I'm mentioning him on air, he said so. Then there was even a situation where a soldier killed a lieutenant. 
Because the lieutenant said, you go out and combat this. But he said, what are people provided? It made the news. It made headlines. There was even a situation where a soldier said, you must give us our own before you go through to meet these doctors. Because they just sent us here to die. One of the people who were the abductees, the man who was released, made this known on national telly that they just sent us here to die. We have not been properly equipped. So give us our own. They said, no, they said 10 million naira. He said, no problem. Give me my 200,000. When you, as you cross this side, you see this other people, you give them their own. The remaining give to the kidnapper. They know. That is why I think there is some level of complicity. And the federal government is aware of this because all these persons came on air. They did not hide it. All right, so open up. Uh, let's quickly, I mean, take a look at this. Uh, yeah, Buna, I want to say, now you talk of the drone. Even if you talk of some say, oh, they don't have what it takes to detect this. One of the money that located the former service chiefs, the NSA came on air to say that the money is allocated cannot be uh, accounted for. The NSA is sure, but the former service chief, their su successors said the same thing. They were rewarded with ambassador and funds. So how do you expect these killings to stop? A defense minister comes on air to say Nigerians should defend themselves. No, you not give me license to carry an AK-47. Even if you give me license to carry an AK-47, how am I going to defend myself against over 500, uh, 40, 50 persons that will come. People will move into schools, move away uh, over 100 persons on motorcycles, and nobody is stopping them. One of the incidents that happened just very close to the barracks in Kaduna, so uh, NDA in Kaduna. All right. Uh, One of the prisons, jailbreak, no gunshots. The civil defense man who tried to be brave was killed, and that, is, that was the end of it. The president came on to say it was lack of uh, intelligence report. I like us to yes, take this said, one no. as we coast the conversation, yeah, as we take it down now. Reports. Okuna Bankatara, yes, right. I, I want us to look at this on the Daily Trust newspaper. Uh, you know, the doctors, uh, Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors, have expressed concern that it's we might probably just wake up to a country, you know, without doctors because of the um, constant movement. And they have asked the Federal Ministry of Health to expedite action on the one-for-one -one policy on replacement of uh, doctors that have exited and uh, clinical staff just to reduce manpower shortage. They are also making claims to uh, the fact that uh, there's also been poor response from state governors in domesticating the Medical Residency Training Act of 2017, six years after it was signed into law. Now, these are some of the issues. At the end of this, we're talking about uh, lack of manpower in the medical sector. Well, uh, Messi, it will, it will get worse. The situation will fester. Why will it fester? Because you have an insensitive government. You have a minister for labor who himself is a medical doctor. An old one for that. Who said that the medical doctors that we have in this country are more than enough? He said so. On air, he was addressing the first. Meanwhile, we have flights of medical doctors on daily basis. The question you ask, and constantly these doctors have always gone on strong for better condition of service. What is the problem? Why will the federal government not address this issue? Why is it that these days in Nigeria, since 2015 to date, we've always had crisis, strikes upon strikes upon strikes? You, every day you are out of the country. You spend so much on flight tickets and with the uh, people you carry out, the internet. We waste money on frivolities. Frivolities. Yet there are key issues that affect lives and property. Key issues that affect the economy. Such as workers' welfare, including medical doctors. And you have, look at us, what happened? They, they set up a parallel, uh, 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 what is it called, uh, uh, body, rather than address the nagging problem. They sent to the medical doctor. A medical doctor is necessary for labor productivity. Condemned the strikes. And these are genuine agitations. The medical doctors are saying, listen, some hospitals don't even have generators. So once there is power outage, of course, the patient is prone to die. 
We don't even have the equipment. Not that we are not qualified. We don't even have the equipment, the basic elementary equipment, to run this hospital. Then the medical doctor himself needs to feed. He has a family. Why won't he leave the country? And you see a medical doctor in Nigeria, you say, this man doesn't have brains. But he leaves this country for UK or US, he mentioned as one of the best medical doctors, because he has the facilities to perform. And it's so frustrating, my dear, when you know your onions and you have factors militating against you excelling. All right. Not because you don't have what it, you don't have what it takes upstairs to perform, but because the federal government is frustrating. You know how frustrating it is. So they leave. Well, we sadly, if it's time for labor, but who is a medical doctor? Came on air to say you have more medical doctors. You have enough medical doctors to take care of it that those that are going can go. That was what he said. All right. Well, uh, open up on Kataria. We, we have to, you know, bring it to an end at this point in time. Uh, we're hoping that we have more time, some other time, to talk about this. Thank you. Good morning. All right, then, we've been speaking with Opener Bonkataria. He's a public affairs analyst. He joins us this morning from River State. Uh, that's the size of our conversation. And off the press, we'll return tomorrow. The headlines will be very interesting. Let's take a quick break. Uh, Kofi, when we return... Yeah, we'll have a conversation on uh, the what's on everybody's lips. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you have a good amount of the new narrow notes. I don't know if you have that. But I, I haven't really had a good amount you know, the new narratives, apart from the one that Tonoja showed me when you were awake. <laughs> no, so, 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 so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll be right back at CBN Extended Deadline for uh, the use of the old narrative. Stay with us. <laughs>